So each generation as an INFJ, where to begin? First, let's start by reminding ourselves what an INFJ even is, besides the awesomest. Each letter of the MBTI has meaning, duh. See this chart? The first letter is where attention is focused or directed. Second is how info is absorbed and processed. Third, our decision-making capabilities. And fourth, but not least, how we face or confront the world. So the MBTI has 16 types. As we know, traits and types can ebb, flow, and completely change direction over the years and throughout personal experiences. Types can alter subtly or dramatically, depending. So regarding the generations, we're only discussing the living ones today. If you know of anyone older than like 110, they're too old to be enjoying this video anyway. So we'll be talking about the seven that are alive today. Keep in mind that birth years of each generation vary by source. Generations are simply the grouping of ages based on streamlined influences and experiences that shape the essence of an individual and their collective society. You'll notice the chart lists more than seven, but if you're perceptive, you'll notice the crossing of years, cusps. Just like the zodiac chart, generations also have cusps where the person may identify with one more than the other or have a happy equal mix of both. And today, we are talking a very rare, unique, elusive individual, each generation as an INFJ. So let's start with the greatest generation. There is born around 1910 to 24-ish. This gen is also known as the GI gen as they grew up smack in the middle of war times. They also grew up during the Great Depression, the Roaring Twenties. They dealt with the Spanish flu epidemic that wiped out a majority of the population. They saw the invention of the TV, radio, and car. So horse and buggy times? Yeah, these peeps. This generation did exist during World War II also, and didn't have a choice whether or not to enlist. See, they had the draft. As an INFJ in this era, oh, no bueno. We would have been one of the ones fleeing, so we didn't have to fight fights we had no business aggravating to begin with. Of course, there would have been that fear of going into the enemy's territory, wondering what the hell everyone was fighting for, when compromise could have been a more effective solution. Imagine being loving, but forced to be hateful. The INFJ would have thought of all the blood, but not only human blood. The blood from nature who flourished for eternities without ever fighting like humans tend to do. The lives of animals lost, all the injustice, the frustration of feeling like a stander by instead of a helper. It would have been literal torment for an INFJ. Best believe the greatest INFJ would have been first in line trying to understand the enemy as opposed to conquering. They would have been more conscientious to the land they were destroying and all the sentient lives lost for absolutely no reason. This generation did things for the greater good. There was a lot of self-sacrifice. They couldn't take life for granted even if they wanted to. And without the freedom to use their true voices, they created and conditioned the silent generation, born between 1925 to around 45. So this generation was pretty small, uh, partially due to their predecessors' rough lives and hesitancy to continue that cycle. The Silents, fresh out of World War II and fresh into the Korean War, were known as the Silents for a reason. They went without and thus were known as being frugal and wasting very little. They saved coffee cans and reused them as kitchen utensil holders. Their electronics and trinkets are covered with electrical tape, any kind of tape really, because why replace it if it can be fixed, even if it's not so aesthetically pleasing to look at? They also had little choice but to either bow down or bend to authority. With lifelong adversity, all the while being bred from adversity, they were super resilient as a result. They persevered. With stressed out parents, these kids were to be seen and not heard. Spare the rod, you spoil the child. So this wouldn't have been an ideal situation for an INFJ. Like with the greatest gen, 
The INFJ Silent T would have been leading the protests and charities, all the while tending to their own open wounds while nurturing those of their parents. So wars, do they ever stop? Cue the baby boomers, typically born around 1946 to 64. No matter who dies, who wins or loses in battle, life ticks on with or without us. After World War II, what else was there to do but fuck like rabbits? You know, like rabbits who'd just been injected with horny chemicals while in a porn amphitheater surrounded by juicy pussy and tasty cock. Yes, hello YouTube. I see you. This video, like the others, contains inappropriate language and thus will be demonetized. Got it. During this time frame, the brain would have been less bogged down, so the generation was wiser than the last. There was better nutrition, wiser choices due to a wider spectrum of content taught at schools, and more stimulation in general. The brain needs stimulation for regions and neurons to prosper. However, Despite the wisdom acquired, choices were just as poor. Let's just say plastic production was fucked this shit bad. Plastic, of course, was invented in the late 1800s, early 1900s, again, depending on source. Okay, side note, why the fuck can't sources collaborate and just get it right? Anyway, and picked up heavily in the 1940s. Like with the generation before, boomers experienced the gross Korean War the nasty Vietnam War, and the aftermath of other wars. They grew up during the height of the civil rights movement, you know, Sputnik and the space age, and ever-increasing technology. Lots of symbolism in this generation of hippies and flower children. Peace, love, and all that happiness, right? This is so INFJ. A very famous INFJ from this era was Martin Luther King Jr., for those of you ready to come at me that is ENFJ, none of us know for sure, okay? I could see him as ENFJ too, though I do lean toward INFJ. Keep in mind, introverts can display a lot of extroversion with their people and when they have to. In short, boomers had optimism and were hopeful for a brighter future, even if the job market did suck a huge casket full of dicks. Look, a bag of dicks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so MLK Jr. could encompass both advocate and teacher. So boomers got sick of the shit. They raised their voices, but a lot of the time from self-preservation instead of community spirit. Thank you, boomers, for creating the lovely and enchanting Generation X. Born between 1965 to 79 80, just so you know, many people born in 1980 do relate more to Gen X than Gen Y, i.e. Millennial. After all, there is a big difference between the two. So Gen X is both highly valued, yet widely ignored, rather forgotten, better yet, invisible. They're the ugly red-headed stepchild who farts too much and can't wipe his own ass that you can't get rid of. Gen Xers don't really put up a fuss unless it's necessary. Rowdy, loud, obnoxious, whiny people get seen, rewarded. So it's no wonder Gen X gets overlooked as a whole. So Gen X peeps were also called the latchkey kids because they had to fend for themselves. Mom and dad were both at work. So anyway, thanks whoever the assholes were who decided to burn bras. I happen to like the concept of, you know, spare time and being treated as a softer sex because I am. It would have been nice to confer with the rest of us before you went insisting we wanted to do equal labor as men. Bitch, I don't. It's a good thing mom and dad were too busy divorcing to worry about child abductions because, well, they left us with perfect strangers as babysitters. INFJ latchkeys, however, were living the fucking dream. Sure, some daddies were away at Desert Storm, but good news was that now daddies had a choice. No more draft bullshit. All in all, society was bending more, and there was more room to roam. See this video. Gen X kids got to explore. Build tree houses without official assholes saying we couldn't for dumb reasons that true intelligent people can't comprehend. We made up dance routines with the other neighborhood kids while parents clapped from their front doors. It was truly fun. 
Trouble was, with all this freedom, our parents were still healing from their own troubles while dealing with new societal ones. Adults were more into themselves than family values. No more eating dinner at the table together, catching up on the day. No more discussions on why the stars shone. The kids researched their interests on their own. They didn't have a choice. Parents were too busy now, keeping up with the Joneses. My question is, who are these elusive, mystical, oh my god, Joneses? So divorce rates were up. Kids now had weekend warriors as fathers. Child abuse wasn't yet widely reported and still happened in the open. Bullies still made appointments with you at 3 p.m. at the flagpole just to kick your ass in front of the entire school and nobody went to juvie for it. Beef was squared away instead of future generations who hold on to petty bullshit and punish for an eternity. Gen Xers also experienced 9-11 firsthand. Everyone remembers where they were and how they heard the news. People cried openly in like Walmarts. Strangers hugged. People were honestly nicer to one another. There was a sense of community. But humans forget too easily, duh, and that unity was temporary. Gen X was wiser, independent, extremely curious. Wanderers by nature, outside of the box thinkers. Another reason they are overlooked is due to being born in between two of the most selfish generations to ever exist, boomers and millennials. Boomers were too into themselves, and Gen Yers are too noisy for Gen X to really pop out. Of course, shit sucked. You know, Buddha stated correctly, life is suffering, and it truly is. But Gen Xers blossomed in the correct conditions. They turned so many wheels that today's society runs on. It was the end of the good old days. It was the end of the days of saying to your buddy, You fucking faggot! I'm gonna mushroom stamp your mom! Without getting in a heap of shit for it. I'm linking a short video because this lady sums it up better than I possibly could. Okay, almost done, swear. So hey Gen Y, aka Millennials, born between around 81 to 94. Wow, so talk about a shift in societal standards. Since Gen X did get hit a lot, they were like, fuck no, and chilled out with their own kids. So not wanting to repeat cycles, as so many before them did, they coddled their kids instead of punished them profusely. This one was kind of one of those oopsie daisies. See, it created a generation of why. Not as if asking questions is bad, but sometimes you have to find your own answers instead of crying when somebody else doesn't do it for you. But if you cry now, chances are you will get what you want. Sad shit, people. Millennials didn't have overdue library fees for finding their own answers. They missed out on the journey of getting to the resolution or conclusion. Gen Y grew up with computers and social media, abundant technology. There is no need to explore or get lost wandering while searching for an answer. It's all at our fingertips. Forget connecting with someone so electrifying that their kiss gives you goosebumps, as long as their picture gives you a boner. The great thing, though, about Gen Y is that they're all inclusive. It's only their approach that blows. People can hide when they talk shit now. Instead of saying it to your face, you can bitch slap them into next week for it. It's safer behind a screen. Nowadays, beef isn't squashed. It's carried on, and what you did ten years ago, you'll now pay for. Less wholesome? It's now ground, covered with broken glass and eggshells. Litter everyone's too fucking lazy to pick up. And a divisive, I know best, mentality. Studies indicate this is the first generation to not be smarter than their parents. Oops, truths, sorry. This could be the straying from norms, regulation, and actual facts now. See, words no longer mean what they do. And new words are formed. Because fuck, the lazy ones were just too hard. Clocks get taken off walls because this generation can only read digital. So, we'll remove them instead of teaching them how to, you know, read them. I mean, all generations contributed to this me versus us division, but some inadvertently more than others. What can seem as good could also be very detrimental. 
Gen Y is too busy banning and ridding of all signs of hardship that previous generations, you know, just don't want to be a part of. Some would say finding a millennial INFJ is common. I beg to differ. An authentic, at his or her core, INFJ would do good whether or not a limelight or lens was pointed at them. Okay, enough about you millennials. My gut tells me you're loving this attention, even if it's not all unicorn poop and cupcake sprinkles. My mind also tells me you're the ones disliking this video so far. See, I'm Gen X. I say shit how it is, whether you get offended or not. See, a fact is a fact, and that's that. If I state a fact and you get hurt or offended, that's not on me, really. That's on you and your ability to handle the truth. Just because something upsets you or puts your panties in a bunch doesn't mean it can't be spoken. For example, this generation blames platforms instead of individuals being assholes on those platforms. You can't shut down an entire platform due to a handful of dicks. It's humanity. People exist here. There is no such thing as rainbows all day every day. You wish. Monuments are being taken down because they cause butt hurt. I understand this. Trust me. I just don't understand why get rid of them, though. History is history whether you like it or not. Don't support it? Then learn from it. Hiding all the things that offend us will leave nothing open for discussion anymore. Thus, nothing left to discover and explore. We miss out on such a beautiful, fulfilling journey. So my advice is to deal. So moving on to Gen Z. Zoomers! Born between 1995 to 2012, these guys got to experience a turn of another century firsthand. Too bad they're too young to remember that. These kids only know technology. Anything before social media and computers was dinosaur type shit. They be assuming great grampy walked 27,823 miles to school through deserts and jungles with T-Rex as his companion. Nowadays, Science and technology is so important, but with the straying from morals and community, those things are now outsourced. But people would rather bitch that others do it better instead of trying to do it at least mediocre themselves. And this is a generation colonizing Mars. Don't! Keep in mind, it was not their idea. They're just the ones who will most likely be up there due to age bracket. As a quick rant on this topic, the galaxy didn't exactly put up a welcome sign for us, unless I missed a memo. I truly don't think we should be welcomed anywhere until we can handle our business on our home planet. We need to handle our shit first. We can't be like, oh, we fucked up our shit, but hey, there's nine other planets to fuck up. Side note, you Teslas out there? I know that not all planets are habitable. Hey, I'll never say Einstein because that guy was a bad friend and a crook. Team Tesla. So now for a Zoomer INFJ, yeah, not so much. If stats were at 2% before, they'd be like 0.00002% now. I just don't see many of the members of this generation or the previous ones picking up litter or doing a good deed without bragging about it and posting about it later with their hashtag spread kindness. If I witnessed these things without a phone or a Facebook post, I'd buy it more. They don't even march for a cause without posting it. There's no relaxing at the lake, either. Nope, there's gotta be an Instagram photo shoot or some rap music blaring. With social media not only in their faces 24-7 but crammed down their throats, deeper issues get brushed aside. The rowdy, fun, popular ones get propped up. <laughs> Spotlight is needed, not only desired nowadays. Without it, people crumble inside. I know this sounds like I'm a negative Nancy, but I'm a truthful Trudy. It comes off as super bitchy in my real life too, don't worry. But there's great things about this generation too, don't get me wrong. If there were genuine Zoomer INFJs, they'd be similar to millennial INFJ. There'd be open action, rowdy opposition. Those petitions you get in your inbox was probably one of those folks. They aren't the ones crowdfunding so they can ride a bike in some breast cancer challenge. These are the folks leading the race and penny-pinching for it themselves to not put other people out. 
They're the ones telling others that to protest is to prove a peaceful point and not demolish. Duh. They're the ones seeing both sides of the Floyd case, and yes, empathizing with Chauvin, who is also human and an alive one who has to deal with the bullshit instead of resting in peace. They'd be the ones promoting that resolution, and forgiveness doesn't always have to have dollar signs accompanying it. Not every crime needs a payout. Some can have a lesson learned and doing better the next time. There'd be a huge understanding of right from wrong and understanding of the shades of gray in between. Unfortunately, untruth hurts. This generation and the one before are majorly responsible for lies being promoted and prevalent. I mean, it did, I admit, take paced progression to get to this point of Karens all around us. Karens? Okay. Segue to Generation Alpha. The most recent generation. Those born after 2014. A soft Gen Z has created an even softer Gen Alpha. You young bucks, you better not be watching this without mom's permission, or I'm not going to come kick your ass because you'll put me in jail for it forever, and you'll dig up shit from my childhood that wasn't so fuzzy. So, regarding the word alpha, come back down to earth, okay? It's not meant as alphas as we know it. Sadly, it's because you guys are going to be so competitive. You'll want to win at all costs, even with the price tag of self-dignity. With the prior two gens very self-absorbed, you were set up this way. It's not on you. The bounce back will be tougher for this generation as there is much less resiliency and grit nowadays than what we once knew proudly. Wars? Psh, bye, Felicia. Those reports are now totally buried under reports of Francine falling off a cliff, but hey, at least she got that selfie in before plummeting. Gender reveals that kill countless flora and fauna, not to mention property. Susie being a brat on YouTube. Or Sandra being a douche on some crappy airline. Even if you do run into these reports, they'll be such a drag, you'll click on to the next thing. Something with more party to it. This generation, as with the prior one or two, touts that mental health is important. But fact is, it's still stigmatized. Nobody wants to be around that guy who can't shake the doom of his life. You're supposed to smile and be positive without ever working out what is causing this sadness and emptiness to begin with. See, band-aids never deeper long-term fixes. That's too much of a bummer. Now... Putting off an image of being rambunctious, a partier, and cool, that's the way to go. Okay, sorry, just spitting facts, that's what I do. Dave Chappelle was right, tough situations do make for tougher kids. It used to be survival of the fittest, survival of the ones who could overcome with sanity and humility and empathy intact. Adversity really does teach us lessons. The darkness really can help us to see the light. You can't hide from storms always. Sometimes you gotta get in that rain and face the lightning. Only then can your deeper, true character be revealed. Hiding from truths or banishing them says more about your ability to handle it than that truth itself. Adversity can be a great teacher of emotional regulation. Gen Alpha may, sadly, see by example that putting up a fuss works more then efficiently taking action and making improvements. An INFJ alpha would be a sight for sore eyes. A stiletto in a room full of flats. They understand we can't make up our own rules because we didn't like the old ones. There's new words. Letters are dropped from already short words to make them shorter. <laughs> Future doctors are going to be shit themselves when they see a penis on a little boy, wondering if they can put it on the birth chart or if parents, Karen and Carl, are going to lose their fucking shit for assuming this sex. Because there's, you know, 59,998 sexes now, so it's hard to keep up. Coming to a scientific conclusion nowadays, based on accurate hypotheses and abundant, valid evidence, is now looked upon. Oh my god. Okay, guys. Shut the fuck up, Sadie. Talk about rant. <laughs> But to all you boomers, Gen Xers, and Gen Yers watching, because that's who digs my shit, I see the stats. Thanks for listening. Don't take any shit from anyone. Don't stray from your morals, but do learn to bend once in a while. Be productive with the battles you choose to fight. 
be softer with the enemies you choose to slay and connect with nature more. See, that's the key problem. We've lost touch. Believe it or not, once upon a time, grass and trees were prevalent. Wild animals roamed freely and widely. There wasn't ugly concrete clogging earth's pores or archaic street poles that ruined natural spaces. People listen to nature with the understanding she only has our best interests at heart. She has enough to nurture us all. It's humans that came in and ruined that. Our ancestors listened and learned from the land. Go into nature more and respect it. See a piece of litter? It takes no effort to pick it up. Just push your ego aside and remind yourself you're not doing it to cater to others' laziness, but you're caring for nature and returning her favor. Listen to the sounds of nature more. Not every lyric has to be dropping it like it's hot or twerking your bubble butt. The birds sing to us too. You know, the bridges between that other magical world and ours are so far and wide that I can't see the two joining in the middle anytime soon. See Anna Breitenbach's videos, by the way. She's an animal communicator and her shit is deep. And be kind to animals too. They have to put up with our bullshit, yet they're dealing with it. If they all wanted to band together and floor all our asses, they absolutely could. They just want no part of us, and I can't say I blame them. So thanks for tuning in to Channel 11 INFJ Kingdom on YouTube, part of the Sadie the Night Rider blog and podcast. The night dot site, bitches. It's your lady Sadie piecing out of this bitch. Before I go, I have a random question for you INFJs. If you could come back as any being, what would you be and why? I'd be a moose minus the ticks and brainworm. Reason the forest and how beautifully majestic moose are. So, your turn. I'll be peeping your comments. Okay, guys, sparkle bright.